Well, you say, Pastor, what was it that turned Sarah from a, a laugher, from someone who's trying to help God? What turned her into a candidate for the Hall of Fame? I, I think that there was one more thing that we need to look at, and it's a good thing for us when our promise is delayed. Who's got a delayed promise you believe in God for? Come on, raise your hand. This is for you. You need to consider this question. And it's found here in Genesis chapter 18, verse 13. It says, And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? And notice what these men said. The Lord said, Is anything too hard for the Lord? <laughs> Maybe you're facing what seems like an impossibility. Maybe the promise has been delayed for many, many years. Maybe you prayed until you simply have no more passion left to pray. Let me tell you something. You need to think about that scripture, that question for a while. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Because the man went on to say, At the appointed time when I return to you according to the time of life, your and Sarah shall have a son but Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. But he said, no, you did laugh. And so my question is this. If, you, if you're going through something, it's good to think about that question. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And meditate on it. Roll it around in your mind. Think about how that God spoke to nothing, hung and created something, and hung it out there on nothing. Come on, somebody. Think about your eye that you're watching me through, and think about how amazing that camera is, that it auto-focuses, it automatically adjusts for the light. It's an absolute amazing thing that lasts for years and years years and years. Come on, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Come on. If Moses can stand at the Red Sea and raise his staff up and God can part the waters and the children of Israel walk through on dry ground, if he can feed them with manna for 40 years, hello, and cause enough water to be in the desert for them to drink, come on, is there anything too hard for the Lord? If Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God can stand in front of Lazarus' tomb. Amen. And Lazarus has been dead already for four days. His body's already in a state of decay. And they're saying, Lord, I don't want to move the stone away. He's going to smell bad. In fact, we can smell him a little bit all the way through the, through the stone already. And Jesus simply says, Lazarus, come forth. I'm just asking you today, is there anything that's too hard for the Lord? There's nothing that's too too hard for him. Come on. Can we give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a big hand today? Think of him, uh, his omnipotence. Think of him, uh, his omniscience. Consider that he is the inventor of the laws of the universe. Amen. And they bend at his will. Amen. Nothing is too hard for God. And then finally, when the answer is delayed like Sarah, and I'll tell you, this is the best point of all, all right? We need to come to a conclusion. I'm trying to lay a foundation of faith in your life. I'm trying to put something down in your life that's so deep that at the darkest moment of your life, you're going to have something to say, you know what? I have a God that's big enough, all right? I have a God that can, all right? And if He can, I can. Come on. Amen. God is who He says He is. He does what He says He's going to do. And let me tell you something. You are who He says you are, and you can do what He says you can do. Hello? We need to come to a conclusion about the Lord. And when you hear this conclusion, it doesn't sound earth-shattering. It doesn't sound like a revelation that nobody else has had. But after Sarah, the princess, has had this visit, she got confronted about her laughing a little bit. She told a little lie. She told a lie. But she knew what she had done in her heart. I think she repented of that. Obviously she did, right? And uh, after she had pondered that question for a while in her mind, is there anything too hard for the Lord? 
she came up with a simple conclusion, and it's found in Hebrews chapter 11. Sarah judged him faithful who had promised. That's the conclusion that we need. Hebrews 11, 11. By faith, let's go back to it. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age. At age 90, she had a child. Why? Because she judged him faithful who had promised. In other words, after all that she had been through, after seeing the way God had blessed her and Abraham, after seeing all the promises that God had done, even after all the trials and the ups and downs with Hagar and Ishmael, all of that stuff, after going to, to Egypt to escape a famine, all different things that she had been through, all of a sudden she began to think, you know something? God is faithful. God is faithful. Come on, somebody. I'm going to tell you, you might be thinking, to yourself, well, Pastor Bob, I'm afraid I might not make it to heaven. I want to make sure that I'm all right with the Lord. Let me tell you something. I've got some really good news. Amen. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Come on. I don't care what the situation in your life is. You can always go back to that foundational conclusion. You can build a ministry on it. You can build a life on it. You can build a family on it. You can build a home on it. You can build a foundation of faith that says, you know what? I'm going to rest in and rest on completely the faithfulness of my God. He's never failed failed me yet. Yes, I've failed him a few million times. Come on. But let me tell you something. My Jesus never fails. Come on. Give him a big hand today. He's faithful. There are moments sometimes in my life and others' lives when we look at our finances and we go, oh, my, 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 my. Help me, Jesus. You ever have that moment? Lord, I need your help now. Maybe y'all don't sing to the Lord like that. I do a little bit. Then I just remind myself, you know what? He's faithful. I'm 59. Looking at the future. I mean, I'm going to keep preaching as long as I can. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep working for Jesus as long as I can. But, you know, the devil comes along. And I don't know if you ever talked to one of those retirement experts. Who's talked to one of them? You're never going to have enough money to, to, that you're going to be safe. I just got news for you. Yeah, I don't care how you save your whole salary from here to the day you retire. You're not going to have enough money for them. They're going to tell you, you need to save more, save more. Save. And let me tell you something. Sometimes that gets down in my spirit. And I'm just like, God, how am I going to live when I'm 93? You want to know what he says? I'm faithful. Didn't I provide for you? God is faithful. Come on, somebody. All you've got to do is go take a walk in the summertime. Amen. Look at the lilies of the field. Come on. See how beautiful they are. See how wonderful the roses are. And all of a sudden you remember that God's the one who clothed them. And even Solomon in all of his glory wasn't arrayed like even one of those little lilies. Amen. Hey, just go down to one of those corners, right? Amen. Fry Road and Morton. Hello. There's about a billion birds sitting on the sitting on the line chirping and eating and having school and watching the tra- what are they doing there I have no idea but I do know this that God my heavenly faithful father fed every single one of them come on I'm telling you today you can trust him it's a it's a foundational truth amen amen would you stand with me today Amen. The Lord is good today. Hallelujah. Faithful God. 